after an eon of days, at least that's what it felt like, I finally got my new Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge. The new Samsung laptop with the new ARM X Elite CPU. I've been using this laptop quite a lot for the last couple of days and I will share some of the good stuff and some of the bad stuff in this video. Cheers from Sweden and welcome to my channel. I post videos about being productive on your Samsung devices, so if you enjoy this type of content, please subscribe for more. If we start with the good stuff. First, the 3K 120Hz AMOLED screen. This one is a keeper. Really top notch. It's sharp and bright. And I can crank up the brightness quite a lot. So sitting outside in bright sunlight isn't the problem anymore. Plus the footage from my S23 Ultra from which I film everything for this channel has never looked as good as it does now. Watching content on YouTube, well, well, as well as other streaming services, is a delight. Not only for the screen, but also for the speakers. They are not the best ones out there, but they do the job. And if I need something with better sound, I can always use any of my Galaxy earbuds or my surfed headphones instead. Then we have the keyboard. I really, really, really like this keyboard. It's easy to type on and uh, it sounds quite nice too. One of the reasons I went for this smaller 14 inch version of the Galaxy Book 4 Edge was that I don't like the numpad that uh, you have on the larger 16 inch version and every 16 inch version of the Galaxy Book line. Like on my Galaxy Book 3 Pro, I keep hitting the wrong keys every time because well, due to the numpad, everything is shifted to the left. Me not likey likey that. What I do likey like though is the touchpad on this laptop. Big, responsive, just works. Maybe a haptic touchpad would be better, but well, we will never know. I also like this arctic blue color. It seems to hide fingerprint and smudges somewhat good. Not that I care that much. I mean, and this goes for almost everything I buy, except I, cars, I guess. Um, if there is some wear and tear on your devices, is that really the end of the world? The build quality of this laptop is really good and I'm comparing it to my light years old Dell XPS. One of them is I think 7 years old now and still in very good condition. In my world the Dell XPS are some of the most well built laptops out there. When it comes to the battery, well, I haven't really tried it out that much yet. It's pretty decent. Of course, depending on what you're doing with the laptop. If I just browse the web, I can probably get around 10 hours or so. But... All of this above is worth nothing if you can't do anything with your laptop. If you can't run any applications. Cause, well, as I said, this is an ARM CPU in this laptop and not an Intel or AMD CPU. 
that's quite a big difference. And here is where things are getting a little bit more interesting. As I mentioned in my stupidest purchase ever video, I have two more or less most have apps. One of these apps works pretty decent if I change my workflow a little bit. More on that later. The other one doesn't exist in the Windows and ARM world. The application that works, well, almost works, is CapCut, which I use to edit my videos for this channel. The app that doesn't exist is Lightroom Classic, where I edit uh, my photos after shooting a wedding. Now, to be clear, I can always use my old Galaxy Book 3 Pro instead. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it would be nice if I could compare the old laptop and the new laptop to, to see if there is any big differences in the workflow in Lightroom Classic. Perhaps I can do a comparison later on, who knows? I guess only Adobe knows that. When it comes to CapCut, and here I hope things will change in the future, but I can't update the app to the latest version. Why, one might wonder. Well, if I do that, well, CapCut crashes. And here comes the tricky part. If I download the setup file from CapCut's website, I get the latest version, which crashes. But if I install the version from Microsoft Store instead, then I get version 3.9, which works. If I don't run the update, that is. Well, works somewhat good. Or good enough. The thing is, if I with my S23 Ultra shoot in the highest quality, which for me is 4K60, H265 with high bitrate and HDR10+. The CapCut is more or less freezing to ice when I import that footage. The solution is to create proxy files, but that takes forever. I think around 40 to 50 minutes or so for a 10 minute video file. Not good. Me not likey likey. But if I change to shoot in 4K60, H264 instead, with no high bitrate and HDR10 plus. Then everything is smooth as butter in the sun. And to be honest, I don't think anyone watching my videos will notice the difference. Now, again, I could of course use my old Galaxy Book 3 Pro with the, the highest quality. But I could also try to use something different, and I choose that letter. Every other application i tried so far, like Obsidian, Firefox, Edge, Outlook, Ambier, Spotify, Audacity, One Photo Viewer, VLC, Photoshop, they work like a charm. 
and they are lightning fast. If you know what to do in Blender, which I don't, then I guess Blender works as well cause it seems to work quite fast. I also installed the beta version of the ARM on Windows version of DaVinci Resolve. I could install it, but I couldn't start the app. All I got was some error message in the event viewer. Not sure what went wrong, but well, it didn't start at all. Finally, games. Now, this is not a gaming PC. It's one of those, you know, ultralight laptops, which normally doesn't work well with games. But here is how Asphalt 9 looks like when playing with the de default settings. You'll be the judge if this is good or bad. Until next time, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And have a lovely day. Bye!